What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the brew lab with me, Lone Fox, your brewmaster in chief. And tonight in the brew lab, I'm uh, coming at you with some uh, teasers, Marrow's teaser to be precise. Uh, I know the background is all black around me. Uh, that's because I'll bring the things in as I need to talk about them. Uh, this is my favorite part of the hype cycle that leads up to the very beginning of spoiler season as i'm recording this that will be happening uh within just a little under six days so you know because of my time zone you know i i uh hammer this point in quite often during my videos um those who have been following me for a while will know that i record my content out of indonesia so it's almost like I'm almost at the date timeline and then America is still way in the past. <laughs> so a lot of weird uh, scheduling things I have to go through to sort of put out my content at uh, times when it is relevant still. But Marrow's teaser has just uh, dropped as far as I'm concerned, uh, fresh off the press. And I, I, like I said, really, really love this part of the hype cycle that leads up to spoiler season because Marrow is a clever sly little fella and he does uh, a really good job with these it's just enough hints and uh, tips and uh, teases to get your you know get the excitement going to get your creative juices flowing but not enough to give much away unfortunately fortunately uh depending on how you see these things um there has been uh, a big leak uh, those of you who have been sleeping yeah. under a rock uh, may not be aware of them or you know maybe you just don't spend so much time involved in uh, you know mtg social media reddit and all that sort of stuff but uh, there has been a leak with all of the mechanics or at least as many as i mean there may still be some that were not leaked but it does appear as though the majority of at least the unique mechanics from this set have been leaked if you're the kind of person who does not wish to have anything leaked and uh, doesn't wish to have anything spoiled, then uh, I'm warning you now, perhaps it is best you do not watch this video, uh, which is also why I've part of the reason why I've left the background black as I go through this little introduction. So now that that is out of the way and you have been warned, without further ado, let's jump right into Marrow's teaser. But uh, before that, I will actually just quickly go over the leaked mechanics. So then a lot of the teasers will make a lot more sense as we go through them. So I'm uh, for this, uh, relying on a different website, uh, Card Base Gamer was just the first one I Googled. You know, I've, I've, I read about these leaks on, on X, but um, I just typed Outlaws Thunder Junction leaks, and this was the first thing in Google. Um, so this we do know already, committing a crime. It's, I, I don't, don't know if it's really can be uh, called a mechanic, but um, this was mentioned during the uh, panel at the most recent MagicCon. So uh, this was not a surprise to me at all and shouldn't be to any of you who follow closely. But um, f during the set, any time that it says commit a crime, it just means any time that you target an opponent's anything. It can be a, uh, you know, a spell that they have on the stack. So counter target spell. That counts as committing a crime, targeting something in their graveyard, in their hand, in their, you know, count, count, uh, targeting a player. Anything that targets the opponent's anything, including the opponent, is considered committing a crime in the set, which is great because it creates a possibility for cross synergies with previous sets where there'll be a card from Outlaws of Thunder Junction that says, if you commit a crime, yada, 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 and then you've got a card from you know, three sets ago that just says, you know, destroy target creature, it'll still count as committing a crime uh, when it comes to the cards from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So that one shouldn't come as any surprise. Then we've got this uh, new thing called Outlaws, which is, I would say, the closest thing I can compare it to is the party mechanic from uh, the uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set. Uh, so essentially, it's like if you have a grouping of five specific card types, then something cool happens. I guess uh, I'm, I'm not going to show you these because that's, you know, I, I draw the line at that, like full on proper card leaks. Just pretend, you know, I'm not going to pause on it. If you have quick eyes or if you want to go find out for yourself, you can do so. There's plenty of websites that have already leaked all of the stuff. Um, but essentially, in terms of the mechanic, uh, it's a, if you'll have an assassin, a mercenary, a pirate, a rogue and a warlock, 
when you put them all together, something happens. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think that's about as, as far as I, I'll take this. So uh, it'll be interesting to see whether like certain effects will still work if you have four of them and you don't need the full five, so you don't get the full effect, but like something close to it. And, and that'll scale depending on how many members of the outlaws group you have or whatever. But I, I quite like this uh, these creature types. We've got a lot of assassins from the most recent set. We've already got quite a lot of pirates from Ixalan. We still got plenty of rogues and warlocks banging about, and it appears that there'll be quite some a number of mercenaries in uh, the new set. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I love this type of stuff. It's definitely my type of thing, kind of tribal synergizing things. So uh, uh, that's what uh, Outlaws is going to be. Then we've got this new mechanic called Plot, which is an, an alternate casting cost. It's somewhat similar to Fortel. Um, so if a card has Plot, that means you can play its plot cost and exile that card from your hand face up. That was, I mean, Fortel was wowza. Remember that uh, Doomscar and uh, oh, there was the counter spell as well as, of course, Alrun's Epiphany. Like that mechanic was crazy because it means that it can now no longer be interacted with if it's in exile. And then uh, later on, um, you can cast it uh, without paying its mana cost. So it can only be done at sorcery speed differently to foretell but maybe uh there'll be cards that get around that you know the specifically maybe an enchantment that has a static line that says like yeah uh you know you may cast foretell or you make foretell cards at any time you could do an instant or whatever but for the moment it appears as though it is a sorcery speed thing so you're kind of putting something there on the side that the opponent can't see and um then later you can cast it without paying its mana cost the casting of plotted cards is timing restrictions depending on the card itself. So you can't plot creatures in your opponent's turn, blah, blah, unless they come with flash. Exactly. Uh, so that's that's another one. Very interesting. Uh, I think it's going to make uh, some waves in, um, in standard. Uh, and then we've got Saddle, which uh, comes with the, uh, you know, I'm, again, I'm trying not to show the cards, but there's going to be a bunch of uh, mount creatures. So I think you might as well just, like the article is saying here, um, look at that in, in the same way as you would um, artifact uh, vehicles, except mounts are always going to be creatures. It's just that when they are crude or when they are mounted, then different thing will happen, you know? So uh, just look at it like um, crew, um, where there'll be a crew um, a mount cost and you'll need to have a creature of a specific power to be able to mount the mount and then you can, uh, it'll do better things um, you know, it's, the, the difference between crew is that apparently here it says it can only be done at sorcery speed. It's going to be interesting to see how this goes, but I, I, uh, I think this is fantastic. Like, I love this kind of, you know, Wild West cowboys, you know, mount your, mount your steed and go riding off into the horizon. It's a very thematically like a great flavor win and a great way to add a new layer of complexity to this game that we all love. Um, and then apparently there's this one more called Spree, the last of the Outlaw Thunder Junction, uh, Thunder Junction mechanics, um, which is basically just kicker. So a card with Spree will offer you multiple options, each with the associated cost. So this is probably the one that is... Uh, where, anyway, now that we've gone over them, um, we can switch to the uh, Marrow's teaser. And uh, then a lot of these are going to be making a lot more sense as we go through them now that we have seen what these mechanics are. So, as always, I'm fairly certain he just copy-pastes this uh, same line every time and he just changes out the name of the set. But before previews or for Outlaws the Thunder Junction officially begin, I thought it would be fun to do another of my Duelist-style teasers where I give tiny hints of things to come. Note that I'm only giving you partial information. So first up, here are some things you can expect. A new batch of five related creature types, so bam. Uh, I guess what he means by new, it means that there's been an older one, and I think what he's referring to is the party mechanic from AFR. Now we have that uh, outlaws mechanic where you have to have that grouping of five creatures I just talked about. So that's gonna be really interesting to see, uh, you know, how much support it gets, whether it ends up just being a more of a limited mechanic or whether there'll be a deck that can take full advantage of that, bringing in 
some of those creature types from previous sets the way you know they often do by seeding some stuff you know they, they've even talked about during the panel uh, with regards to the Bloomborough set that's coming out later in the year with all the little tiny creatures and then there's been quite a lot of these like just you know mouse uh, um, uh, walrus and uh, these uh, I beg your pardon not walrus um, badger like there's, there's been some stuff that was printed in the most recent sets and then later on it all makes sense when they print the set that they're supposed to kind of synergize with I love that I love 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 that um, so I think uh, I think let, let's just say I hope that it, it becomes a, a at least a decent playable deck. It doesn't have to be tier one or anything, but something that we can have some fun with because uh, I love that kind of synergy. Then we've got a card capable of returning three different card types from the graveyard to the battlefield. This is very cryptic, a la Marrow, a la Mark Rosewater. Um, I mean, we just had a card that does this in the most recent set and there's, and there's more than one already that do similar things the question is whether they it'll bring th all three of those things to the battlefield at the same time or whether it's just capable of doing three different things but you can only pick one uh whether the capable means that there's some caveats to doing so so you you may only do two types but if certain conditions are met you can do three types we have no idea, you know, the, how much does this card cost? What colors is it in? Uh, there's been a lot of these things lately, and not all of them have been really playable. Even Lich Knight's Conquest that we had from uh, two sets back uh, can bring, I believe, also Planeswalkers back. Oh, I have to go and check on that again. But the point is, it never really saw any play. Still, the the main reanimation card that is used is still just Cruelty of Gix because of the read ahead and how modal it is and all of that. Um, but, and the, anything else that's been printed of late that's similar to this, there's like an X cost one from uh, Ixalan that uh, brings back a thing as a creature token. Eh, so like almost zero play. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll have to be really, like, competitively costed and uh, in the right colors and that for it to see any play. But still interesting. Nice to know. Um, next up, we have a mechanic players have been asking uh, us to do for many years. Gets made as the setting was perfect place to finally do it. I am 99.99% uh, .99 sure that he is referring to the mount mechanic that we've just gone over. Uh, makes sense. You know, we've had vehicles. Why not mounts? I can imagine many players asking for it. And now that we finally have a, a Western-styled uh, plane that we're going to, uh, I'm assuming that this is exactly what he's talking about. I may be wrong, but I, would, uh, I, would, uh, I wouldn't bet money on that. I'm, I'm fairly certain. Uh, next up, we got Dual Lands. This one with a subtype that has never been on Dual Lands before. So we have seen some of the Dual Lands already during the spoilers. So, you know, uh, during the panel, the, the official spoilers. <laughs> and there was no subtype on those. So they're obviously still keeping some stuff hidden. Uh, like I said, spoilers are not too far away, so it shouldn't be too long until we, we get into what exactly this is going to be. But my guess would be something like ice, uh, you know, uh, snowlands or desert lands or whatever. That'll be like forest, desert, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, snow forests, you know what I'm saying. Um, in a Western style set, I would imagine, I, I mean, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm not going to uh, risk my reputation that, that what it is uh, on, on hazarding a guess on this. I'm just really excited to have another dual land. I'm hoping it's something good that's actually usable for some of the color combinations that are struggling with dual lands who didn't get so much love in previous cycles. Um, <clears throat> you know, Boros. Not that Boros Convoke or any of the Boros aggro decks need any help right now, but like they're forced into playing all sorts of really terrible lands like Thran Portal. Hopefully this is a, a cycle of duels that's good. Um, I'm assuming it's the rare cycle from the set because we haven't seen that yet. Just guessing what subtype it is though. No idea. Sound off in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Next up, we got the new modal mechanic that introduces something different to think about. I'm assuming this is that kicker thing, the spree. 
uh, from what I briefly read in the article that was on screen before this teaser post, uh, there it, it appears to be uh, kicker with more than one different cost. I guess similar to that double kicker thing we had, the, the most the recent card that I can think of that that would be good for an example is the um, the angel that is played in uh, domain ramp that has like kicker in green and kicker in black. Uh, sorry, red and black. And then if you have both colors, you can kick twice. And if you don't, you know, you can kick once. Um, and that's modal. Uh, so maybe the spree mechanic will have different, you know, requirements. And then depending on what you can, uh, what of those requirements you can meet, then it, you can modally uh, adjust the effect. Seems like the logical conclusion. Again, sound off in the comments. But anything that's modal like that, I love because it means that uh, a single card ends up having potentially use more than one use either on the curve or at times in the game or depending on the situation that you're in it's always nice to have modal cards in general so uh now it's a, it's a it's a full-on mechanic epic bring it on next up we got a card that can swap slash exchange control of up to three different card types so this is again I get that type of thing where you you take something from the opponent and you give them something and you try to make a deck that you take the good stuff and you give the bad stuff. Most recent example I can think of is uh, the something something handoff black card where you would uh, wait for your uh, arc fiend of the dross to get down to two uh, oil counters and then just hand it over to the opponent and then beginning of their upkeep they lose the last oil counter and they lose the game. Uh, you know, something like that. We we had a, uh, another card like it. I think it was Zendikar Rising. I believe it was like an Azorius Saga. Uh, starting to get foggy that far back because I don't play any of the Eternal formats. But um, you know what I mean, where, where we swap control of different things with the opponent. It'll be interesting to see if it's uh, playable at all. Probably it will just be a bit of a meme. But, you know, usually when Marrow puts this stuff in the teaser, like some of the stuff is like purposefully put there to get you like, oh, that might be really good. And then ends up seeing no play. And others, it's like it's in there, but very cryptically worded. But then it ends up being like one of the most broken cards in the set. So it could be either or. Then we've got a new creature token that has ability no creature token has ever had before. So this again, thanks to the leaks, I have a, a bit of an inkling of what this might be. Uh, I, I'm, I, I believe... Uh, the mercenaries are going to have this ability where they can like tap and give another creature in the group plus one plus O oh, or something like that. Reminds me a little bit of the recruit mechanic. Was it recruit? Uh, the only card that had it. No, it's not recruit. Is it recruit? Uh, the only card that I can think of that actually saw any play with it is that um, two mana, one, one soldier human the, sh the shield of banalia something dominaria united where you you know before you declare attackers or while you're declaring attackers one of your other creatures can tap and then give its power to the you know to the one that is actually attacking um and in the case of that banalia card i'm just referring to you got to scry two um, you know the card I'm talking about, and it, you can also tap it, discard, and give it indestructible. So, um, uh, just so we don't get lost here, I was referring to these mercenary tokens, which uh, are going to have this ability, and it'll be very similar to that ability I just described. Um, whether that ends up being good or not, outside of limited, will be uh, to be determined. But uh, nice, I I'm fairly certain that this creature token it, they're referring to the mercenaries uh, from the, you know, the five related creature types. It'll be one of the members of the of the um, outlaws. Then we got a typal card for skeletons and zombies. I like that it's both. Um, zombies, they're on their way out. You know, they would have already been out, but they're on their way out now. Uh, when rotation hits in September. Uh, we had, of course, plenty of zombie support during, uh, you know, Innistrad and all of that. And there was a little moment when I played them again because we got a couple of, like, there was that invasion that made zombies. 
there was some reasons to use it again and then also when of course um the roaming throne came out a couple of people threw together some zombie decks again but they're on their way out uh but skeletons on the other hand uh we've just received uh an enchantment a three mana enchantment that cares about descending and then you can bring it back to your hand and then when you cast it you make another skeleton and then it gives skeletons plus one plus oh and haste or something like that uh and we've got a few other skeletons peppering here and there there's a pretty decent one drop which is the two one that keeps coming back from the graveyard from dominaria maybe a cool little tribal skeleton deck uh could be fun to try out uh, unfortunately we don't have that um enchantment from i believe it was zendikar rising uh golgari five mana enchantment that made all the skeletons that was really cool unfortunately that's not around but of course for those of you who play historic uh, explorer and whatnot that might, this might be interesting but for me anything that says you know typal tribal whatever you want to call it uh and all of this woke nonsense we're like oh my god we're we're offending people who belong to actual tribes by calling a deck a tribal deck who 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 was offended by that like like is do any of my subscribers uh belong to a tribe of any kind and did they find it offensive that Wizards of the Coast. Oh my God! Just <laughs> whatever. I'm not gonna go on a whole little woke agenda thing. Like, do whatever you want. I don't care. I just found it really funny that they had to go and like change everything to typal, which is just such a. This just does not roll off the tongue and really doesn't encapsulate the whole thing of in my mind of like the skeleton tribe. Uh, but anyway, I will continue to refer to this stuff as tribal. Like love, love it or or hate it. That that's how I'm gonna keep referring to it because I guess I'm a bit of a boomer. Then we've got a bunch of creature tokens from the set. Some might have abilities. I guess he's alluding to this point up here about uh, a, a creature token with a new ability. One one white sheep. One one blue bird. Uh, whatever. But then one one black vampire rogue. That is interesting because of the outlaws. Because we've already got good vampires in the format. Yada yada yada. Uh, mercenary again talking about the outlaw you know grouping of five creature types uh i think that's probably this one but let's see uh varmint whatever ox yeah sure whatever blue black zombie woo, woo, woo. dinosaur cool a little bit more dinosaur support there some angel stuff it's fine i'm assuming this uh elk is the ones that will be made by the new Oko planeswalker which has already been spoiled simic colored three mana or four mana oh, i have to go back and look at those spoilers but there's a again if you haven't been sleeping under a rock there's an Oko planeswalker in the set he's the main character of the set he's the one pulling off the biggest heist in the multiverse and uh, i'm assuming these are the three three green elves that that planeswalker will be producing um then interesting that we have like a scorpion dragon it's a four four that's like a nice beefy creature token uh, and then some like potentially even beefier ones we've got like an xx and a star star these are always you know they're always based upon some other element of the board state or whatever you know uh blue ox has a, a star star where uh, is the number of whatever in play or you know you know what i mean so th these are interesting an xx green elemental and a star star blue ox you know the the the, the sky's the limit <laughs> you could essentially have a whatever 2020 so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the what these end up being then we've got some of the planes with legendary villains so um this set is set on a <laughs> on a plane this set is set on a plane <laughs> um made reachable by these new plot um elements or plot yeah i mean you know it's genius i think it's genius whatever you have to say about hasbro and watsi as a company like the people the creatives that work within it are really just amazing and i am a, a, obviously a huge absorber of all kinds of fantasy content um you know uh, I'm, I'm also a huge fan of sci-fi and there's been a few books in my days that have somehow managed to marry the two where you get this like sort of steampunky sci-fi futuristic setting mixed with like 
western cowboy gunslingers and some like magic fantasy layered on top with spells and dragons like that for me is just like oh my god like, that's why i'm so hyped for the set um so uh again the the plot items that i was talking about are these omen paths that are uh, a consequence of the um war with the phyrexians and now people from sets that may not or you know from planes that were not able to be in the same place because they are not planeswalkers or whatever and now there are these omen paths so it turns out that they're all ga all of these villains are gathering at uh you know in in thunder junction to pull off the heist of the multiverse the biggest heist in the multiverse and i think i don't need to we all know like e e each of these sets there was often a very clear villain and most of those villains from these planes are going to be uh assembling at thunder junction to pull off this heist so uh, i guess i'll leave it up to you guys again in the comments to sound off and let me know what you think these uh you know which characters are going to be uh, joining Oko for the heist um then we got some rules texts these are the these are the vaguest ones like i mean they really get my mind like burning with ideas and whatnot but it, it, you've only got a little bit of some of the text on a card it's like you can never tell like it might sound amazing and then it costs 100 man and it's completely unplayable or whatever but uh you know still cool i, I still think it's I, like i said this is my favorite part of the of the hype cycle so even though it's so vague uh sneaky mark rosewater style they're they're good um so then repeat this process x more times could be anything <laughs> if it wasn't car uh, you know then little things like oh this is the ca uh, capital so that's the beginning of a sentence uh but this one is um, is not in caps so uh it's the you know the end part of a sentence so then what could be before it what will come after this you know maybe there was a full stop before this and the, the rest of the the sentence comes before but you know it, it, he's genius he's a genius if it wasn't cast or no mana was spent to cast it this is almost like opposite to you know there's a bunch of these cards that says if it was cast then it does x and y like uh, for example just the other day when i was doing the naya discover dinos deck and i made a little misplay with the um appraiser you know the the four mana human oh my goodness with discover three uh, and i reanimated it and it didn't i didn't get to discover and then i said you know then you go and read the card and it just says if you cast it discover three if you reanimate it if you you know cheated into play in one of the many other ways that we can do so you know fight rigging comes to mind whatever um it it won't do the thing because you haven't actually cast it this seems like the opposite to that like if it wasn't cast or no mana was spent to cast it then da -da 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 happens super cool uh can't wait to see what that is then plotting cards from hand cost two less like this it, like i was talking about with the plot mechanic uh you know that it's sorcery speed and whatnot like this might be one of those cards in the plot deck if we get a plot deck that will help get around some of the downsides of the plot mechanic to make it more competitive so this already like having you know it costs two whole less is a lot and then if there's another card that says something like you know you may plot cards at instant speed or whatever you know eh, interesting I, I i really hope this plot thing is nice because that foretell uh, which is the most similar thing i can think of to it um was very very impactful during its time and standard so uh, you know it, it, it's going to end up also being very annoying um because you remember like the opponents just foretells on turn two now you're never going to know what that card is you can't interact with it you can't duress it out of his hand you can't look at it you know, and you just got this thing sitting there in exile and it's probably a counter spell or a sweeper and you just can't and you have to constantly play around it the whole game and and it's it's a different sort of uh, mind game to just 
having something in your hand that the opponent doesn't know and they're thinking, okay, I can see the colors he's playing in a tournament. Maybe I've even seen his deck list. I know what he's got in his library, but the chances of it being in his hand are this and that. In, in case of something that he's already specifically gone, look, hey, hey, I've got this thing, but you can't see it and it's here in exile and I can cast it now. It's going to be, uh, it adds another layer to that mind game, in my opinion, which is, is good for magic. So even though I'm probably going to end up hating it because it's going to be that most of the plotting cards are like good control cards. It's still a good thing to have for the game in, in, on the whole. <clears throat> then you can't cast this spell during your first, second or third turns of the game. So the fact that it says that means that it's a one mana spell, right? Or one X. Because if it's specifically telling you that you can't cast it on your first turn, second or third turns, it means it, it's something that if it didn't say this on it, you could, which means it's probably a one mana card. And what I'm thinking is there's that rare fairy with ward two, or is it ward? Yeah, I think it's ward two. And then you can pay two mana to untap it and gets rid of a stun counter. I think it's a stun counter. And uh, it's played in the um, Simic Cauldron combo deck because of the activated ability. But it was also played briefly in, in Dimia Fairies whilst people were trying to make that work. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's this one drop that is obviously completely OP you know a one mana three three flyer ward two <gasps> ridiculous if that was an actual card like without the the downsides the drawbacks it would be broken but you have to wait for three turns before all the stun counters are gone or spend mana into it to untap it and then it starts to do something by like turn three turn four you can actually start attacking with it so this to me seems like a similarly designed card in that it's it's a really powerful one drop and they specifically prevent you from casting it until turn four uh, to make up for the ridiculously powerness of it. And there'll be some sort of upside that like, though I have to wait till turn four to do so, it not only is very cheap and powerful, but it also gives me another little bonus to, um, these are all just wild speculations, but I can't wait till spoilers start and then we can go back and look through this again and see what I got right, what I got wrong. And again, please, like, let's, let's talk about this in the comments. Uh, come join us in the Discord community. Let's discuss. Um, then we've got a card that gains, uh, you know, that, that gives a card the ability to have flashbacks. I'm assuming it's, it's uh, an instant of sorcery that allows you to give another instant of sorcery flashback or something. Or maybe it's a could be an enchantment that gives your spells flashback zero. I mean that would be bursted. But flashback is a mechanic we know. Uh, you know things from your graveyard can be cast again. The fact that flashback zero means you can cast it again for free. That's like really really cool. So really excited about that one. But I could not even begin to hazard a guess. Then we got a target creature becomes a white rabbit with a base power and toughness one. So. Your sort of typical, I'm guessing, blue removal spell. The most recent one that I can think of made your creature into a 1-1 one, one citizen. You know, it's like instead of actual removal, which blue doesn't have, they just nerf your creature. It's also sometimes in white, uh, you get this type of effect. Um, it's just essentially, try, you know, you make, your, make an Atraxa into a, a little 0-1 rabbit. Uh, I'm assuming it's something like that. Then we got another coin flip spell happening. Uh, the last one I can remember playing with, with any sort of uh, recollection that makes sense, is a, it was like a vampire. You flip the coin, you get heads, you gain six life, you gain tails, you lose six life, I think. And I used to play it alongside Vito, and then just flip, flip, flip. And then, you know, there were, it was that Vito from Zendikar Rising, I want to say, that like dealt damage equal to how much life you gained. That was really fun. <laughs> But it's been a while since we've had a you know coin flip, so that's interesting. And and in you know when you win the flip, you copy the spell. And the fact that it says win means that like you get to ask the opponent heads or tails. So it's not um, you know one where 
it's like if heads this, if tails that. It's asking the opponent heads or tails, and then if you win the flip, you copy the spell. Seems interesting. There we go. If a triggered ability of a legend creature you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Like, how many times? Uh, like, uh, I feel like there's been a thing that says that in every set for the last, like, four sets. Uh, the Roaming Throne, Delny, the, the, we had the Blue Virtue, we have uh, the five mana Elish Norn, like, uh, another Panharmonicon type of effect. Starting to get a little bit bored of them, but whatever. Cool, I guess, for, for, um, a good limited environment it's nice to have something like that in every set it's becoming like the ubiquitous like every set has to have a freaking four mana white sweeper or a you know a two mana black removal spell it's that type of thing um you get that many additional up this one this is interesting i've never in my entire time playing magic seen a card that does exactly this you know we've had extra turn card you know, take an additional turn after this one i'll run epiphany I, i've talked about we've even still got a card with cleave right now in standard that makes use of that uh, extra turns but extra upkeeps after this phase don't think i've ever seen a card that says that ever and yes i missed a big chunk from when i stopped magic cards and started magic arena so i could have missed something there please let me know in the comments but as far as i can remember this is the first time i've seen a card that gives additional upkeep steps so interesting um then we got oxen you control have double strike and that is it as far as this is yeah again there's no oxen that i can think of in standard so maybe again more for limited but uh, that's it for the portion of rules text. And now he goes on to the final little bit of the, of the teaser where they talk about uh, creature type lines from the set. Uh, and here we really see the flavor of the Western world that we're going to. Uh, you know, armadillos, shark rogue. I have a feeling that's probably one of, the, one of the villains from another plane that's come to visit because there's not too many sharks in the wild, wild west. <laughs> um, a plant bard, also pretty interesting. Coyote. Going back to the Armadino, this is definitely very Western, little coyote. Uh, a Homerid mercenary, a rhino brawler, and then an ox angel. You know, oxen have double strike. Mm -hmm. Porcupine mount, core advisor, and a giant scout. And then some of the names. This is, this is sick. Like, there's some really good ones. You know, claim jumper, fine. Former posse, I'm assuming, has to do with the outlaws mechanic. Gold rush. There's going to be lots of treasures in the set. Uh, so sweet, because we were running a bit dry on, like, good treasure cards. Um, they're still, like, uh, you know, big score is the best thing right now for treasures, really. Otherwise, meh, there's not much. They're fading off a bit. But nice to have a, a, new, a new set with, again, a bit more support for treasures. I, I love treasures. Um, then we got the Great Train Heist. As you know, this is a heist set. Uh, all of these villains are in Thunder Junction to do this heist, so this may be it. Uh, but then, here we go. Like The last few here are like very, very uh, Western-themed, like fantastic. Uh, high Noon, uh, Quick Draw, Reach for the Sky. <laughs> the Resilient Roadrunner sounds like something out of uh, Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> but then Shoot the Sheriff, and this town ain't big enough for the two of us super sick um so yeah that's it that does it i'm trying to be short and concise and to the point and not bore you guys to death of course i'll you you'll i'll leave a link to this in the in the video description and then um he just ends off by reminding everybody to tune in on the 26th uh to see the um debut video and then that's the officially the beginning of uh, spoiler season so stay tuned to my channel for reactions to all of that stuff as always uh, but that is going to be it for this one guys Thank you all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one with another fresh, fresh, best of three standard brew. And until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab signing out. Peace, y'all.